Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Matt Hester, and I want to take a quick look at another great feature inside of Windows Server 2008 R2. Specifically, we're going to look at PowerShell V2. Now, PowerShell V2 is not only in Windows Server 2008 R2, but it's also available for Windows 7, and it's also available for download for your older servers. So V2 is not just an R2 feature, but it is built in. So we can take advantage of it right out of the box. And I'm going to show you a couple of the great things that we've put into PowerShell to make it easier to use. Now if you haven't started learning how to use PowerShell, I recommend that you do it. I highly recommend uh, that you learn how to uh, use PowerShell because I'll tell you from a perspective of a scripting language, you're not going to find a better language to work with your Windows environment. Even if you're using VBScript today, not to knock VBScript, but for our administrative tasks, PowerShell is the tool to actually work with. So let me show you three of my favorite things inside of PowerShell. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my PowerShell session. The very first thing I like is the, the new output control called the grid view. Now the grid view does require the .NET framework to be loaded on your server, which in most cases it will. But traditionally when we run commands like the get service command, just for example, we get all this data displayed and a lot of you have probably used the output commands uh, to maybe send it to a file like an HTML or CSV file and generally speaking a lot of those files are temporary use kind of things. You're looking for some nuggets of information, maybe you want to throw it into a CSV file so you can dump it into Excel to work with it. Well let me show you this new output. So I'm going to go pipe out grid view and by the way tab autocomplete still works. And then notice what I get here when I output it to a grid view. I get a window that I can actually function and work with the data. What's cool about this is that these columns work like Explorer columns. So I can sort just by clicking on the columns, what their status is. Um, I can even just add in, I can even start uh, adding criteria and say, you know what? I just want to find all the running status. So I can actually just contains. And notice as I start typing, it automatically filters it out. I don't even have to type in the word running. How awesome is that? Or I can actually say, you know what, add criteria, and let me just show you display name, and I'll start typing the letter A, and notice it starts filtering, and it wildcards before and after, so if I get a little bit more specific, now I can start seeing information about what's going on. You get a general idea that this grid view gives you a lot of functionality to be able to work with the complex, sometimes complex, output that we have inside of PowerShell. Now the other one that I like, and this one's another GUI element that I've already installed on my server, is the Windows PowerShell integrated scripting environment. Now it's a feature, it's not installed by default, but to install it, you simply go to add features, and then you will select that feature here. Now I've already done this because after you select the feature, you click on next, you watch a bar go across the screen, and you have the feature installed. And what does it allow you to do? Well let me show it to you. So I'm going to go ahead and go PowerShell. And notice we get this new option that says integrated or ISE, integrated scripting environment. And look what you get. This one's cool. You're going to like it when it comes up. You get a GUI now for PowerShell. And by the way, if this is something that will flip your bit later, is that it was written using PowerShell. What this is designed to do is just give you a little bit of different flavor for your environment. If you don't like using the command prompt, you can actually use your commands here inside the GUI and you can even copy and paste right inside of here. So one of the things whenever I run commands uh, is how do you get help? So if I do uh, get service and actually let me go to the front of this command get help, get service and notice it color codes the difference versus the commands and the parameters that I can use. So let's show me the examples of this. The nice thing about this GUI is I can say hey show me what are the required services for the WRM service. The great thing about learning PowerShell folks is I don't claim to be an expert but I'm really good at reverse engineering. So what it allows me to do is learn the commands then I can normally tweak it to find out what's going on. You can use this very easily. That's one part of the PowerShell. The other way about the ISE is that you can actually create your own scripts and actually put in little debug points uh, little uh, breakpoints you can actually work with. Now this isn't as robust as like a tool, uh, tool like Visual Studio uh, you know and the tools that we have there. We don't have the IntelliSense although uh, PowerTab, a nice little addition that you can use here. The great thing about this is when you're working with your commands here you can just highlight certain text and either hit F8 or run selection and it's going to run that selection right for you. So we have this ability to work with this great little scripting environment built in to Windows Server 2008 R2 and really into PowerShell 
v2. You can also, if I open up a script file that I have on my desktop here, just a DNS migration, you can see how this can really help work with complex scripts on how you can actually work things, how you can comment lines out. So we're trying to give this a much easier uh, learning curve for you to work with inside of here. So these are two of the things. The last thing I want to show you, and it's probably the most important feature inside of PowerShell what we have, is the ability to remote. We now have built into PowerShell the ability to run remote PowerShell commands on servers that are in our environment. So one of the servers I actually have uh, currently running is my uh, R2RTM box. Now, to work with the PowerShell, you actually have to enable the remoting on the system that we have. So to actually enable this, it's enable. And notice PS remoting is the switch I'm going to, and I'm going to put a force. Now I've already enabled it on the system, but what would happen is it would set up your WinRM service um, for remote management to actually configure and work with this. You'd also have to make sure that that service is currently running. So if I get service, WinRM, verify it's running. Good, it's currently running, I'm ready to go. So now I've enabled it on this remote server, which is 2K8R2RTM. Now I can run commands inside of my existing PowerShell that's going to remote to that. So let me show you one of them. Let me just clear the screen to clean up some of the uh, commands that I've run. So invoke command and I have it tab autocomplete computer name. Now to run it on other servers just you have to put in the name of the server. So demo 2k8 which is my local server I'm running on. 2008 R2 RTM which is that server you saw just a minute ago. And then you simply put a script blocked command to be able to run this. Now what goes in the script block? Your PowerShell commands. So I'm just going to say get, uh, we'll go do a get service. A little bit shorter of a command. Make sure I got everything spelled right and hit enter. And notice it's going to show this. Now the command's still running. It shows all my demo 2K8 services. But here in a second it should also show my 2008 R2 RTM services. So I can run commands from one PowerShell session as long as PowerShell remoting has been enabled on another server right here. Another way we can use this, oh, let me uh, actually bring my PowerShell window back up. Another way we can actually use this is we can actually enter PowerShell sessions directly on those remote servers. So I'm going to say enter PS and once again autocomplete and then just tell it the name of the server I want to enter a remote services command into R2RTM. And then notice that my PowerShell commandlet over here actually references the server I'm trying to get to. Now, in case you don't believe me, let me go ahead and go back to my root directory here. And we'll just do a quick make directory of hello remote and do another DR, verify it's there. So notice it's there on my server. In case you didn't believe me, I was remoting into another server and running commands via PowerShell. Let me hop into the server here, go to my computer drive, go to my local C drive, and there's Hello Remote. Pretty cool, huh? We now have the ability to do remote PowerShell sessions. And because the .NET framework is now supported on top of server core installations, now you can actually remote into those server core boxes as well and run remote PowerShell. So those are three of my favorite things. The Outdash grid view for outputting data, uh, the integrated scripting environment, as well as remoting. With that said, thank you and have a great day.